Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I rise to take another call. The Minister said uh, in his contribution that it should not be an absolute right that an accused appears at his or her own trial. He said it should be a matter of discretion. He also acknowledged that this was a change from the status quo, which was an important change from the status quo. And I'm not misrepresenting the Minister on either of those propositions which he stated from the Chair. And he's right, in re in re he's right that it is a change of principle. And so I want to address the issue of why then we haven't got a Bill of Rights vet. The Bill of Rights vet should be given where there is a derogation of civil liberties that are mentioned in the Bill of Rights Act. The Bill of Rights Act says that we should have a right to be present at the conduct of a trial so that we can face our accuser. Plain English. Now, I heard the Minister in the chair then have a flick at the prior Attorney General, who the National Party criticised for giving a Bill of Rights vet that was in favour of the Electoral Finance Act. The Attorney General actually went to the trouble of doing a Bill of Rights vet, justified his logic as to why it should have one. In this case, we haven't got one because the Attorney General has not seen fit to address the issue as to whether this derogation of my civil liberty and the civil liberty of everyone else in New Zealand to have the unconditional right to be at the trial if they are accused of a crime, and we have not got a Bill of Rights vet. It is an outrage. It is an outrage. And I agree with the Speaker for the Greens, Kennedy Graham, that this is the most significant attack on civil liberties that we have seen in this Parliament. And it is an outrage that the government is just pushing on remorselessly. Now, you know, at the first reading, we, we, we actually bear some responsibility here. Virtually all of the parties other than the Maori Party voted for this at first reading because we weren't cognizant of the fact that this was going to apply at substantive trials. But at select committee, that became clear. That became clear. The Human Rights Commission raised it with us. The New Zealand Law Society raised it with us. And so the select committee looked at it in more depth. And we found that there was no mischief here to be overcome. There is no problem at the moment with letting the accused appear at their trial. What the government really wants to do here is speed up preliminary matters and bail hearings and adjournments and not have the unnecessary expense of the defendant, the accused always turning up. We agree with that. The National Party should take a breath. It is wrong to proceed remorselessly with taking away the civil liberty. It is wrong. Now, the Minister also said, well, look, um, the judges won't do this if there would be prejudice. That is a facile, superficial analysis of it. The judge will not know what the judge doesn't know at the time the application is made. How can you know at the start of a trial what's going to happen during the trial? You do not know what you do not know. You cannot know what you do not know. So injustices that could happen later in time cannot be known to the judge at the time that the application is made. So the juror falling asleep, the inappropriate relationship between the prosecuting counsel and the defence counsel, the inappropriate signs from someone in the gallery, the judge falling asleep, the, you know, the incompetence of the lawyer, the inability of the accused to actually get a decent view of the screen because he's been blocked in the prison by a corrections officer, the inability of the accused sitting in a prison cell to actually say in respect of a particular piece of evidence, that's a lie, cross-examine them on that. How are they going to do that from a prison cell? This is so obviously unjust. I ask the National Party to take a breath. I ask the ACT Party to vote in respect of a procedural motion that we report progress now. Take a breath, report progress now, and let everyone just reflect on this for a week. Reflect on this for a week before we push the button. And if the government still wants to use its muscle with the support of the ACT Party and vote it through, they can do so in a week. But what's wrong with waiting for a week on this? What is wrong with waiting for a week on this 
so that everyone can Mr. Speak, Mr. Chair. Honourable David Parker. Mr. Chair, what is wrong with waiting for a week on this to reflect on whether a mistake is being made? Now, I actually think that this has crept up on the government. I saw the advice that the departmental officials gave to the Select Committee, which I'm sure will be similar to the advice that was given to the Minister. And I have to say it was a once-over lightly in respect of the constitutional principles. It was approaching this issue, as Kennedy Graham has said, from a point of view of administrative efficiency rather than constitutional principle. And that's where this has gone wrong. And actually, I don't blame the government for that. These things do go wrong, as evidenced by the fact that all of the parties except the Maori Party voted for this at first reading. But now we're alert to this issue. It is time to take a breath and slow down, and slow down. So in a short period of time, Mr Speaker, I am going to move a motion that we report progress. And I would encourage the government to think about reporting progress now before this goes to the vote, because we can avoid making a mistake here by taking a breath and just reflecting on this. I think that the Solicitor General, and I'm sure, in fact, and I'm, not telling, I'm sure that the Solicitor General was not the person that was responsible for the Bill of Rights vet. It will have been someone lower in that organisation. I'm also sure that the Attorney General who gets advice from the Solicitor General on Bill of Rights vets like this came to Select Committee a week ago and said to us he would look at it again because he saw our concerns. He saw our concerns. Now, in fairness to the Attorney General, because this has come up on the order paper so fast, the Attorney General hasn't yet had the opportunity to do that and actually get back to the select committee where this was raised uh, as part of the estimates process a week ago. And I would like to give the Attorney General the opportunity to do that, because I know that the Attorney General does take his Bill of Rights vets responsibly, his responsibilities seriously. And I, so I would be most disappointed if the government doesn't agree to report progress before this goes to the vote tonight, that actually, the control of that actually lies not just with the government, it also li lies with Sir Roger Douglas. Now, I know the ACT Party think that they've done a deal and they've got an obligation to support this legislation. They've got an obligation to support this legislation. But I would suggest, Sir Roger, that it would be appropriate in this situation to actually report progress now and just let it come up on the order paper again. This is not a matter on which the government is going to rise or fall. This is not a matter that goes to budget. This is not a matter that needs to change this week rather than in two weeks' time. I would suggest that the appropriate thing for this parliament to do on this, in, in the face of the criticisms by the Human Rights Commission, the Law Society, and actually all of the parties except National. I know even that the ACT Party are nervous about this. They just feel that they've got an obligation following having made a commitment to vote for it. I would suggest that it's time to take a breath. Lynn Pillay. Thank you very much, Mr. 